Hello, my name is Matthew Colesall and this is a video presentation as part of my application for the position of postdoctoral research associate at the University of Sydney. As an overview of the presentation, I'll begin by discussing clinical trials and how expectations may influence their outcome, after which I'll review a number of alterations to the studies outlined in the project brief before discussing a few complementary studies which I think would benefit the project. Now, it almost goes without saying that evidence-based research into pharmaceuticals are a priority given how large a part of modern medicine drug therapy is. As such, ensuring a treatment's uh, effectiveness is paramount. The current gold standard for drug testing is the double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial, in which participants are randomly allocated either to a treatment or a placebo condition, with neither themselves nor the treatment's administrator being aware of their grouping. In theory, this paradigm ensures that both groups experience all aspects of the treatment in the same manner, um, with the exception of the active component, with characteristics that may influence treatment effectiveness being evenly distributed between groups and expectations regarding treatment allocation being balanced. Um, in this experimental paradigm, the placebo control is used to ensure that the differences observed are due to the active ingredient of the drug and not to other variables that both the drug and the placebo share, thus providing an accurate demonstration of the gene's uh, effectiveness. Now, unfortunately, there are a number of ways in which expectations and the placebo effect itself may invalidate trials. Blinding is a key element of clinical trials and serves the purpose of balancing expectations regarding treatment allocation and effectiveness between the two treatment arms. Should participants learn that they are in the active treatment condition, either through perceived improvement or side effects related to the active treatment, then the blind may be broken and the cause of any further improvement cannot be disentangled um, from the active treatment's influence and expectations. Um, another problem is the principle of additivity, which clinical trials rely on. The theory stipulates that improvements from the placebo treatment supplement the active treatment's effects, and so the comparison between the placebo and the treatment, arm, treatment arms reflects the active treatment's effect without expectations. If this is not the case, um, then, and that the placebo and treatment's effects are non-additive, then internal validity is called into question as the trial does not accurately portray the treatment's effects. This would, might suggest that the placebo response and the active treatment compete with one another for mechanistic resources or for overall improvement. Um, in this way, if the assumption of additivity is broken, then failing to find the effect of an active treatment in a clinical trial would not indicate that the effect of the drug is purely placebo, but it might suggest that the treatment has an active effect which cannot be accurately demonstrated by comparing it to a placebo. Such conclusion would have significant repercussions for clinical trials, as the placebo would become, uh, well, sorry, the placebo control would become a unintuitive control condition. Um, another problem is that in clinical trials, participants are informed that they will receive either an active or an inner treatment, a suggestion which will inherently lower expectations of improvement given the potential for being given an inner treatment. This suggestion, uh, this situation drastically differs from actual practice, where an active treatment is always to be expected. Um, this leads to the problems with generalising findings from clinical trials as large treatment effects would be expected in practice. Uh, it's also worth noting here that a number of other paradigms have been devised to assess drug efficacy, some of which avoid these problems, such as the open hidden paradigm and the balanced placebo design. These experiments have not been employed to the same degree as clinical trials, though, um, primarily due to ethical or technical restraints. Um, as such, the clinical trial remains the main method of testing drug effectiveness. And because of this, conducting research to specifically examine how expectations may invalidate, invalidate trials is the first step to improving their design. Um, finally, in recent years, there's also been a considerable amount of academic and media attention towards the placebo control condition uh, in clinical trials, um, such as the work of Irving Kerr, suggesting that the benefits of antidepressants over placebos um, are, is clinically non-significant, um, with any reported benefits potentially being due to the problems I just outlined. Um, these findings pose some serious ethical problems re regarding the side effects of active treatments and the potential for prescribing placebos to patients. Um, there's also been movements such as all trials, which campaigns the use of all data from clinical trials, particularly the negative ones, in order to portray a more, uh, portray a more accurate picture of evidence-based research. So I feel this attention highlights the necessity for improving clinical trials in order to benefit public health, with understanding the role of the placebo effect and expectancies in general being crucial to this. 
So moving on to improving the proposed studies, one possibility is the use of skin conductance response as a more objective measure of expectations and pain experience. Um, it seems plausible that having a reduced expectation of pain because of perceived allocation to a treatment group, for instance, would lead to a weakened level of arousal. Such a measure would as such be particularly beneficial to studies 2A and 2B, where expectations are hypothesized to differ between the between groups based on the manipulation of their treatment experience. Um, skin conductance response may provide an objective and online measure of how participant ex expectations change phase through phase of the experiment. Um, the project also describes the possibility that reported pain may map in a non-linear fashion onto experienced pain. Um, use of skin conductance response in this experiment may as such provide a more objective recording of pain experienced by the participants for use in study one. Um, in addition to this, uh, electrical stimulation and skin conductive response are compatible within some software, such as the Ad Instruments Power Lab system used at the University of Hull. This may mean that incorporating such a measure into the existing experimental setups uh, would be a fairly simple task. Um, next one, well, study 2B aims to examine how side effects influence expectations of treatment allocation and the degree of improvement. A number of studies have found that individuals in the placebo arm of the trial still report side effects, which would likely improve their expectations of improvement. This represents a manifestation of the nocebo response. Um, one previous study has indicated that the personality trait of catastrophizing, which refers to um, the exaggeration of negative thoughts regarding a stimulus or event, has been linked to nocebo hyperalgesia. Um, by measuring this trait, we may be able to control for the effects of catastrophizing, which could influence expectations uh, and improvement in the unconditioned group. Moving on to the complementary studies, I firstly have a number of suggestions regarding the additive nature of placebos and treatments. Um, study 1 aims to examine whether placebo analgesia and analgesics are additive in nature. Uh, in nature. Now, placebo analgesia itself employs the endogenous opioid system to inhibit pain, the same system by which opioid-based analgesics produce analgesia. Um, however, the treatment being used in study one, ibuprofen, well, in a number of the other studies as well, but um, ibuprofen is a non-opioid analgesic which inhibits COX enzymes. Um, given this distinction, it may be possible that additivity in analgesia operates differently based on the mechanisms of the treatment being used and the placebo effects in question. While this may be hypothesized in either direction, um, in that an opioid treatment might compete with opioid receptor binding um, with the placebo effect, or that analgesia produced by a non-opioid would overlap the pain reduction produced by the placebo effect through the endogenous opioid system, um, it still remains an interesting and novel area of research. I also feel this question is particularly important as if the principle of additivity is found to differ based on the mechanism of action of a treatment and the mechanism underlying a placebo response, then clinical trials will only be valid in very specific circumstances. Um, the next complementary study follows a similar vein to the suggestion that additivity may differ based on the functionality of the treatment and the placebo response. Um, placebo effects themselves are functionally different, um, varying both in mechanisms and the factors that influence the placebo response between different body systems and diseases. Um, this causes problems for applying the findings from a placebo response in one domain to another. Um, a good example of this is the COMT VAL158 net polymorphism, in which the VAL VAL mutation breaks down dopamine in the prefrontal cortex faster than the net net variation. Given the role of dopamine in the prefrontal cortex and expectations, um, researchers found that met met individuals display a greater placebo response um, in irritable bowel syndrome. Now, while it seems really intuitive, this polymorphism has not been found to influence the response in placebo analgesia, uh, which illustrates the difficulty in generalizing findings, even when it seems it might be a quite clear hypothesis. So, because of this problem of generalizing findings, I suggest broadening the application of the project to examine additivity between a treatment and a placebo in a different bodily system, um, and I would suggest sleep. Uh, this suggested study keeps with the feasibility of study one by using over-the-counter sleeping medication, namely um, and the antihistamine uh, diphenhydramine. Using the same experimental design in a placebo and diphenhydramine at two dosages are examined under three different levels of expectations, um, with the sleepiness being measured before and after treatment administration. The measure to the study would be the Karolinska sleepiness scale, a nine-point scale assessing sleepiness, and the Karolinska, uh, Karolinska drowsiness test, a measure which involves EEG and frequency analysis in order to assess alpha waves during a simple task. Um, the results of this results of this experiment would then be analysed in the same manner as study one, revealing if the sulfurific and the placebo are additive in nature. Um, 
So, as I mentioned, conducting such experiments would broaden the scope of the project by potentially indicating similarities or differences in activity between placebo effects and treatments in different bodily systems, with such hope being desirable given that clinical trials assess all manner of different treatments. Um, lastly, with issues with ecological validity of clinical trials go beyond the patient's knowledge that they may receive a placebo. The context in which the treatment is received differs dramatically between the trial and practice. Um, a clinical trial may occur in a pharmaceutical laboratory or a university with the administrator prescribing the treatment in a manner befitting of research. Um, in practice, however, uh, treatment may be taken at a GP's office or even in the patient's own home, with there being a considerably greater therapeutic alliance between the patient and the administrator. Um, such differences would likely influence expectations and thus the degree of improvement. So I think that manipulating such factors as the quality of interaction or familiarity between the person who receives the placebo and the one who administers it, as well as the environment in which the treatment is given, may reveal further issues with the ecological validity of trials when applying them to actual practice. So as a few concluding remarks, I'd like to point out my enthusiasm for the project. It's not only because the focus of the project lies within my main area of research, the placebo effect, but also because the findings from it may inform and advance the methodologies employed in pharmaceutical research itself, which in turn would benefit health across society. Um, such a combination is naturally an exciting research prospect. So that concludes the end of the presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, please not hesitate to contact me. Goodbye.